What's going on, Internet? This is not Christopher Peterson, and you're listening to the Nerd EXP Podcast. If you deduce that this is Edgar, you're pretty good. Uh, today, I'm being joined by... Drew. Sakari. Unfortunately, Guillermo was taken out of town for business, and Chris couldn't make it. Uh, he has a sore mouth today. Good luck, Chris. <laughs> Uh, we will be covering this week's top entertainment headlines, and we're also going to be talking about what games we'd like to be remade, and also the biggest movie surprises and disappointments for 2014. So, so what's the point of all this? So what's the point of all this? <laughs> <laughs> to start a conversation and to level up your nerd IQ? I think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... If this is your first time, thank you for listening. And if you're a returning listener, thank you for your loyalty. Please make sure to rate us on iTunes so that way we can uh, we can get some nice stars. And we will read the best reviews. Someday. Someday, yes. <laughs> so let's start off with entertainment headlines. Uh, let's start off with news of Comic-Con. That's a pretty big topic. Uh, it's going to be starting up in next week, I believe, and Friday. No, Thursday. 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 Two uh, days from this day. <laughs> yes. Uh, Comic Con is normally the 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 easiest way, or the most. I mean, Comic Con is Comic Con is where movie studios come and discuss about upcoming movies, trailers. They release new stuff. Um, as mentioned in previous podcasts, there will be no Star Wars in this Comic-Con. Uh, there will be a heavy presence of, hopefully, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, I'm sure Disney is going to talk about the Avengers, maybe. Big Hero 6. Big Hero 6. That'll probably show up. Right. Um, Comic-Con is also where Kevin Smith answers one question for two hours. <laughs> uh, the new Tusk trailer is going to be released. So this is um, this is just an introduction, saying that hey, Comic uh, Comic Con is coming, and we'll, we will be talking about it in late and uh, pro- most likely the next podcast. We'll be talking about what happened in Comic Con. So that's something that's coming up in the future. And uh, Hollywood needs to get its own convention. Oh yeah. What do they have to do with comics? <laughs> You're right. Uh, Comic Con <laughs> used to be just comics, but then it expanded to. Hollywood knowing that the comics are the, the, the well, and they keep going to the well. So Maybe Comic-Con... they should go to Dragon Con. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I mean, talk and a little... <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> talk a little bit about Dragon Dragon Con. I've never been, personally. Um, it's, I'm pretty sure, the largest convention east of the Mississippi, outside of uh, San Diego Comic Con. Okay. Um... Lots of celebrities go. I mean, you don't get as big a name as Comic Con, um, and they don't they don't reveal anything like right. they like they do at Comic Con. They just are answering fan questions, talking about stuff that's already happened. A lot of TV, sci-fi TV. It's a sci-fi convention mainly, um, more than anything. Oh yeah. So sci-fi fantasy, um, and uh, I mean. It's great. It's a fun time. It's it's a good good bit of money, uh, which I'm sure Comic Con is as well. Um, lots of cosplay, which is definitely the highlight of the weekend. Oh yeah. You just sit around at night and people watch. Everyone there's a huge bar in one of the hotels in the main lobby. Everyone just sits there and watches people in their costumes. Have we mentioned where it is? It's in Atlanta. Atlanta. It's downtown okay. Atlanta. How Labor Day weekend every <laughs> year. How many times have you gone? I've been three three years in a row, uh, hoping to make this my fourth. All right. So, yeah, well, I'm excited. What well, What was the coolest thing that you saw there? Um, this is the podcast tough. 30 <laughs> XP interview time with Drew Dwight. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, so Drew, how many drinks did you have that night? Huh? Huh? My My favorite celebrity, I, I, well, there's a lot. There were some older ones. Uh, we saw Ernest Borgnine actually the year before he died. Um, and he was great. He was hilarious. So congenial. I don't know who that is. He, he's uh, an older, like a really short, older actor with big eyebrows. <laughs> All right. He's got like long, hairy eyebrows. Uh, he was in, I think, the only thing I think of off the top of my head for, for our purposes of what we would watch is uh, Escape from L.A. 
Okay. He was a taxi driver in, in the city, the prison city or whatever. And um, so we saw him, and uh, my favorite was Jason Momoa. And, like, oh, he, was, he, was just, he was just hilarious. He was funny? Yeah. And he came, he carried out his own giant Tupperware full of beer, and he offered it to the host, and he was great. That's cool. Um, yeah. I mean... He was probably there for that God Awful Conan movie, right? No, no, this was, um... Was he promoting after that, anything? I don't know why he was... I mean, he, there was... The only current thing would have been uh, the bullet to the head, which isn't really for that audience, so... Uh-huh. He was just there, you know, off of Game of Thrones fame. There was there was a lot of Game of Thrones that year. Was that a Brad Pitt movie? Bullet to the head? No, Maybe that was the Sylvester else? Stallone, uh, okay. like, cheesy January release, you know. Well, segueing from Comic-Con... Um, slash look, Dragon Con. Slash Dragon <laughs> Con. Um, let's go over some comic news. Um, like Chris mentioned last week, we're 10 for 10, whoever's counting. Uh, Falcon is going to be named the next Captain America. So what, uh, what Chris mentioned last time is correct. Uh, the Falcon is going to take the is going to take the, uh, the the mantle of Captain America, and uh, something that's cool about that is that the Falcon. Well, in the movie, the Falcon is black, so it's pretty nice to see Thor as a woman, and then a black Captain America. Um, I don't know much about how he takes over. Uh, I'm sure you guys can look online, but. How cool is that, right? Do you have any thoughts, Sakari? Diversity, diversity. Awesome. <laughs> well, um, something that came up to mind just really quick thinking about it is that does the Falcon get the super soldier serum? Or, I mean, is he just going to be an underpowered <laughs> Captain America? Because Captain America is strong because of his heart and because of the super soldier serum, right? Did, is it in the comics that way? I'm not sure. I know Falcon in the movie is just a, a veteran, not just, but he's a veteran that picks up, like, tech that he had when he was, like, doing missions. But in this case, the Falcon is pretty vulnerable. <laughs> I mean, if he can't withstand the punches, like, for example, when uh, Loki fights Captain America, like in the movies, Loki punches him, like, really hard. Yeah. Could Falcon withstand that? No. It's With the shield. With the shield? Yeah, maybe. maybe. So, We need Chris here for this kind of talk. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We miss you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about the comics. So. Right. Uh, so, uh, moving on to um, television um, headlines. Leftovers is a new show on HBO that uh, Sakai and I have been watching uh, ever since Veep ended. So HBO is really good about ending shows and then starting new shows. Uh, Leftovers is a book, and in, in this case, it was adapted for TV, and it's written by one of the lost co-creators. In this case, it's Damon Lindelof. He's responsible for, as I, as I mentioned, Lost, but he's also responsible for the Star Trek movies, and like it or not, Prometheus. Like he's the one that helped rewrite so the movie. Star Trek. Yeah, he helped write Star Trek. I didn't know that. See? News to Drew. <laughs> <laughs> so, The Leftovers so far has been a pretty slow show. Uh, I know it's kind of watch it and Drew caught up. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what are some of your thoughts so far, Drew? Um, I, I watched the first episode last night mm-hmm. before bed, and I don't know, I've, it felt very lost to me. Like um, Losty? Like Losty, yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the, the show Lost. Lost-ish. Um, Lost it, there's just a lot of w- strange occurrences with no explanation. Um, you know, it was, it was a pretty decent setup. I wasn't hooked. Yeah. Um, but I know for the purpose of the show that I wanted to continue on. And today I watched the s- second, third, and fourth episodes. And I definitely like it a lot more. Yeah. I wouldn't say I love it. The, um, you said, like you said, it's slow, which is, is true. And, um, what I like, I like the main guy, the cop, the police chief. Garvey. Garvey, yeah. yeah. He, Garvey Jr. He, I think, I can just feel his frustration with uh, right. uh, his wife um, not not talking to him and leaving the family. And like, I think it was the, the, the fourth episode it ended, or 
near the end, his wife brought him divorce papers or whatever, and he right. just like, was like, what the heck? And like, I just, I felt his frustration. He's the only one that moved me or affected me in any way. And I mean, all the other ones, I mean, they're decent. <laughs> right. And I like some reveals of uh, character crossovers, like he ran into the girl from the very beginning of the first episode in a bar, um, stuff like that. Randomly. It's a small town. Yeah, it's a small town. Uh, so something I left out was what the leftovers actually is. Uh, so for <laughs> for the listeners, I'll, I'll go over it real Oops. quick. So the leftovers, like I mentioned, is a book. It's set three years after a massive exodus of people. Uh, people just it's disappeared. Just poof. Poof. Yes. Yeah, so it's three years after that. People are still recovering. Imagine if you lost your wife, or if you lost your husband, or if you lost like your your mom, your dad, your sister, like your stepsister, your friends. Just imagine losing them without any scientific explanation. So, three years later, here we are. That's, and that's part of the frustration. That's that's, that's the part of the frustration. Yes, and, and all of the characters. Um, no I, explanation. I don't want to spoil too much for the listeners. Uh, I I do recommend it. It's different. It's original. It's not a remake. Uh, I like that kind of stuff. The story is very uh, character-driven. Each episode so far has focused on one character, which is nice. Um, Sakari, do you have any do you have any thoughts? Um, yeah, it's it's similar to Lost. I only watched the first first uh, season of Lost, and I lost interest. No mm. pun intended. But I did not want to watch that anymore. Um, but. Leftovers is, is, is quite interesting. There's a lot of religious tones in it, a lot of symbolism in it. Yeah, that's um, something I didn't get because I'm, I'm not really well trained or learned in that area. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a, it's, it's there. But I can definitely tell yeah, oh, when it's there. I just don't know what the heck it means. Yeah, it's, it's quite, quite interesting. It's, it's very, very, it has you questioning a lot. Like you ask, Tons of questions throughout. Who are they? What are they there for? Was it the GR? Yeah, the guilty remnants. Guilty remnants. We know nothing about them yet. What are they? Why do they dress in white? Why do they smoke? How do they you have know? so much money? <laughs> Why do they? Yeah, how do they acquire so much money? Who's funding them? Who's behind them? What's their purpose? And then that Wayne guy. That the Wayne guy. Hug healer. He's the one. I, he's the part I don't really care yeah. for. That's, that's very like. It's very. It's, it's smoke very monster-esque cerebral. from it the is. lost. You're but, right, yeah. Yeah, the, but that Wayne character seems like he's, like, the most important character, it seems like, because mm-hmm. you don't hear too much about him until... I, I love the, the preacher. Yeah. Yeah. Who, I mean, the guy who just became a preacher after the whole event. Like, he felt like he had to. Yeah. And he's trying to expose the, the bad people that disappeared or whatever. Right. Uh, he's a great actor, too. Is Eccleston, something Eccleston. Yeah, Christopher. Christopher Eccleston. Yeah. He was a bad guy in Thor um, Dark World. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, moving from more serious stuff to Sailor Moon. So, Karen, would you like to talk a little bit about mm-hmm. Sailor Moon? Um, well, the Sailor Moon, they actually started redoing, the, like, they did the whole entire series. And it's more closely to the manga. If you read the manga, I have not read the manga all the way through. I've just watched the first. I was exposed back in the 90s to the dub version, unfortunately. And then I rewatched the Japanese version, like, the subtitles when I could, um, like, early, early 2000. But it is a great series. Um, the Hulu is streaming the old version on, they're streaming the old version along with the Sailor Moon Crystal as well, which is the new remake. And Sailor Moon Crystal is amazing. The art is awesome. It needed an update. They're not chubby little characters anymore. They're, they're very much, um, that's the rebooted one, right? Yeah, they're the rebooted one, and it's just like it's more modern, like okay. towards newer enemy. And it's it's it looks nice so far. I only watched the first episode so it's far. Supposed to be the same people. It's the like same a reboot or mm-hmm. like a completely different Sailor Moon. Same people. Moon Princess Pretty much Moon. almost the same. <laughs> Most of them are the same voices cast in it. I mm-hmm. mean, the only thing that's different is that they redid the. Um, the artwork is different, and the um, storylines closely to the magna, and the um, music is definitely different, which okay. is nice. It's it's really nice. I like it. So, would you recommend it for people that love Sailor Moon? Yeah, they. I, I think they would like it because it's just it correlates with the magna. It's it's nice to see actually 
go how, follow the original story. How long has it been since the original? Do you know? How like long? the original release of the. Of the it was in ninety two, I believe. Yeah, so ninety one and ninety two for the original. Decade. How nice to introduce More than two, like a two new, decades, correct? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's nice to introduce like a newer generation to that, mm-hmm. which is what I feel Hollywood is doing. Yeah. I mentioned it last time. Power Rangers is coming back up. Mm-hmm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is coming back up. Sailor Moon. Um, that leads us to the discussion of uh, Dragon Ball Z. I mean, Dragon Ball Z was a huge thing for me growing up. Uh, Guillermo was actually the one that introduced me. It was big in Colombia, <laughs> so he got like he got myself and Alan, uh, my younger brother Alan, like really into Dragon Ball Z. Um, I know the first movie didn't go th- didn't go very well. Uh, it didn't it didn't capture, I guess the the emotion of Dragon Ball Z. Uh, however, about the first animated movie, the first no, live the action. first like live action. Okay, movie. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. So uh, nothing right. There has been a trailer, or is it a teaser? Teaser it's a trailer. Or trailer? Yeah, yeah. So it's a trailer. It's it's just being released in August, so it's coming soon. It, it may crap. have already been released, yeah. released, released in Japan. Already? I don't know. Is it made by a domestic studio? Do I we know? I couldn't tell you that. Um, I have personally not seen the. Um, I haven't seen the trailer, but Drew has. Do you, do you want to talk a little bit more about it? Um, well, unfortunately, I had to watch it without sound, so oh. I didn't get too much. Um, just saw the characters bouncing around. There it is right there. All right. Um, it's basically Goku, or I guess the world that Goku lives in, this weird earth. It, I, I never watched Dragon Ball Z, by the way. I've oh, seen really? two episodes, <laughs> so I don't, I don't know much about it. But um, the world is threatened by a new villain, uh, Beerus or Beezus or something. He's, he's a weird purple dog cat looking creature. <laughs> dog cat looking creature. Yeah. Um he he I think he looks to me like he's themed after Egyptian gods from okay. like the hieroglyphics. So he's got like gold bracelets on and kind of, I think it, if I remember correctly he had a gold necklace. Okay. He looks kind of like the hieroglyphic cat except purple. And um, he's that's supposed cool. to be godlike, and that's why he's so threatening to Goku. Goku's already the Super Saiyan most powerful, but apparently now there's a even more higher level of Saiyan God or God Saiyan that he has to attain in order to beat the new Beerus, Beerus? God or whatever. Oh so, yeah. Uh, reading the description, it is animated, so I didn't know that off the bat. I didn't know it was not going to be animated, or I didn't mm-hmm. know that it was. Sorry. I understood it to be live action, but it is animated. That's cool. It's by the same people that, that created the first Dragon Ball Z. Oh, that's nice. Uh, it, it, it takes place right after the battle with Majin Buu. Oh, the Buu saga? Yes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, um, the official description is following the events from the Dragon Ball Z television series after the defeat of Majin Buu, a new power awakes and threatens humanity, Beerus. Egyptian cat guy dog. <laughs> uh, he's a powerful guy of destruction, searches for Goku after hearing rumors of the same warrior who defeated Frieza. Oh. So that's where we're at. Uh, I'm definitely going to go see it. Sakari, you're probably going to watch it with me? I'll probably watch it, yeah. Sure. yeah. It's anime and it's an original anime. So. It's by the same people who did it. Yeah. Check your local listings. Check your local <laughs> listings. Uh, going back to the nostalgia factor that we were on before, Power Rangers has some news. Uh, Drew, would you like to talk a little bit more about it? Yeah. Um, Roberto Orsi or Orchi? I don't know. I don't Orca. Know. I don't know. Or- <laughs> <laughs> Killer Whale. Killer Whale, yes. Yeah, um, he was interviewed this week um, about um, something. Not about Power Rangers, but Power Rangers came up. And what he, he revealed that the movie is not going to be a reboot, as was originally... Um, what projected? It's it's in the same timeline in, in this like in the same universe as the original American Mighty Morphin Power Rangers like series. Angel Grove, Angel Falcon Grove. School. Yeah, okay. it's gonna be. I guess those people are all gonna be all grown up now. Maybe what? we have to get new Rangers or what? So that's kind of exciting. And, and they asked him about uh, whether or not original cast members are going to be making appearances sure. and kind of talked his way out of that question like oh it's up to Saban if we want to do oh, that yeah? or whatever so yeah. I think they, they're they definitely going to be trying for that and you know they're going to get whoever they can and I'm, I mean I can tell you right now 
Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy Lee Jones. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones. He, he's going to play <laughs> the old ads of Black Ranger. I, have no, I mean, I know why I said that. Because it's Tommy. Tommy and he has Jason. three names. Jason David Frank. <laughs> yeah. It is, is, there's no doubt he would he would not say yes. So the um, He was like the longest one on the... Like on the original one, he kept mm-hmm. making appearances. For, I think for Billy Billy, Billy was, was Billy? holds the record, but not as a ranger because mm. he took over as like a the alpha replacement. Or yeah, whatever. but <laughs> but yeah, Tommy holds, holds the longest uh, span as a ranger, All right. and uh, he he loves. It. I, I saw him at Dragon Con actually last year, and uh, you know he he adores his fans and and loves his Power Rangers fame. And yeah, I think he'll definitely be the first to sign up. And he's like in real life. He's like a like a real martial arts. Oh yeah, instructor he, or yeah he does like he does mixed martial arts fighting now. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's retired or not, but he was undefeated in his official matches, which was like mm-hmm. three. But um, yeah, I mean, he never got to like pay per view or anything. But mm-hmm. and he has he's like a super Christian apparently, and he has his own oh, yeah? Christian wrestling apparel. Uh, Jesus didn't tap. Is what he calls it. What? He's got this giant tattoo on his arm. Says Jesus didn't tap, and he sells T-shirts and stuff. And, well, whatever. You know, so whatever he's like a, re- money, a wrestler for Christ. Yeah. He holds the world, the Guinness World Record for the most boards broken while skydiving. What? It's just, yeah, it's crazy. You can look the, it up on YouTube. What kind of record just is boards that? Boards on the air. Random. So. Yes, it is pretty random. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, but yeah, but he'll he'll be there for sure. I'm excited. I really hope because I know. Amy Jo Johnson, she's like the only one that doesn't do conventions and stuff, and I really hope they could convince her to return for a, a big screen adaptation such as that. How many Power Rangers movies? How many Power Ranger movies have there been off the top of the head? Do you know? Because I know it's two a Power that Ranger I know movie, of. So yeah. one with Ivan News, and then the other one's Turbo. Turbo. Yeah, I think right? that's it. Um, I can't think of any. I stopped. I mean, I never. Even, I've never even seen Turbo. I stopped watching just before Turbo began. I, you know, finished most of Zio and then. I uh, felt that I grew too old. <laughs> so, but, yeah, I mean, I love Power Rangers more now than I ever did then. So, so moving from Power Rangers, uh, up next is a discussion about set photos. Uh, in this case, it's the first Avengers set photos have come out. Mm-hmm. And these um, are officially released, not leaks. Yes. That, I, I, I like that you make... I like that you made that um, distinction. We are... We're trying to go away from the grainy footage that someone in China took, yeah. or grainy stuff. Or cell phone um, videos. Yes. So, there are some photos online um, showing set photos of Thor and Captain America, of the twins, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, mm-hmm. um, played by the same, like, these two people, like um, Elizabeth Olsen and uh, Aaron Johnson... We're in Godzilla together. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, they were a couple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, make sure to listen to our Godzilla podcast, and we've reviewed that already. Uh, Tony Stark and, and um, uh, Bruce, Bruce Banner. Uh, Scarlett Johansson actually had a lot of doubles used because she's pregnant, or she was pregnant. So um, that's something cool. And just more set photos out. The Falcon is now a part... Like, set photo show Falcon in there, like, as part of the Avengers. Oh, that's Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Internet, erase that. I needed Chris that's here. Warhammer. <laughs> that is Don Cheeto. <laughs> it is not the Falcon. I'm so sorry, oh, Internet. There is Hawkeye, though. <laughs> <laughs> Another bird theme. <laughs> what a mistake. Oh, my sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I like, I like this photo of the we suits hanging on the, the hangers. Same. I can't tell. <laughs> what is this on the Hulk? Is that a pair of purple shorts? I think it what? is. So uh, <laughs> the last cool. photo that we're looking at is all the all the different costumes. So we got Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, Black Widow, Hulk, Hawkeye, and then Fury. So that's pretty cool. Uh, if you guys, oh, have, Ultron. Have, have, yeah, have you guys have been on the internet recently? Entertainment Weekly published the first look at Ultron. Uh, he looks pretty badass, and there are multiple copies of him. Mm-hmm. So I can't wait to see how the Avengers stack up against Ultron and Agent Ultron coming out next May, yep. 2015. 
Uh, last but not least in movie news is Tusk. Oh, Guillermo, if you were here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tusk got a release date. Um, like I mentioned, this is something that they'll go over in Comic-Con. Uh, they're premiering the trailer. Oh, they're premiering the trailer, yep. Um, so this is Kevin Smith's little baby that he's grown from previous, like if you listen to previous podcasts, Kevin Smith pulled this out of his own podcast. So that's Maybe someday meta. we'll be making movies. Yeah, like so this is pretty Zelda meta, right? Or, you know. Yeah, <laughs> this is so meta because we're talking in a podcast about Kevin Smith's podcast that he made a movie that he made a movie out of. Uh, Tusk is going to be released September nineteenth, and we'll see how it goes. I mean, that that was Guillermo's most anticipated movie of the year. So too bad he's not here to talk about it. The poster is <laughs> pretty cool looking too. It's yes, like a... the poster is very Nightmare Before Christmas. Ish. It's got a cliff in front of the moon with things dangling from it that make it look like tusks on a walrus. Uh, in casting couch news, uh, Idris Elba has been tapped to play one of Guy Ritchie's Knights of the Round Table. Uh, he uh, he has been in other Guy Ritchie movies. Uh, he was in Rock and Rolla. It's a movie that I saw. It's a, it's a little weird, but it, I liked it. It has Gerard Butler. That's weird because I don't remember Idris Elba. That was before I knew who he was. So yeah, I mean, Idris kinda... Elba was just the cool guy from... He was Stringer Bell. Stringer Bell. From The Wire. Uh, so Rock and Roller was Richie's last project with Idris Elba and Gerard Butler. So uh, Gerard Butler and Idris Elba are now both uh, tapped to be in um, Guy Ritchie's like, Knights of the Round Table. Uh, this is very preliminary news. Uh, they're not finishing up with any like they haven't finished up with casting, so that's pretty cool. Um, in I related guess news, not going to be a Sherlock Holmes three. Oh, <laughs> I liked Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Like the Game of Shadows was nice. I like yeah, I liked the second one more than the first. Yeah, with, mm. with Moriarty, 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 Moriarty. 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 <laughs> it was got, it was Jared Harris. Jared Harris. This this is, a, you're talking about American. Robert Downey Jr. Junior's, yeah. Uh, yeah. He? he? Yeah. All right. Jerry Harris is, is an excellent actor. Yeah. I loved him in as a uh, Ulysses S. Grant in Lincoln, and I wish like he would get his own spinoff movie just about oh, really? him playing Grant. It was oh. he was in like five minutes of the movie, but he was I great. never saw it. He I he was in either. Fringe, and he's also in Mad Men. That's where I know him best from. He's mm-hmm. Mad Men. Um, one last bit of of a casting couch in this case it's a director is Edgar Wright so once Edgar Wright stepped down from Ant-Man Peyton Reed took over I'm sure you guys know because you listened to the podcast Uh, he is working on his next project it's called Baby Driver Uh, this is very early Uh, we don't know much about it yet but apparently something he's been writing for years since yeah. even before what uh, Scott Pilgrim or something like that? Um, I'm not sure, Drew. Uh, the film is described as a collision of crime, action, music, and sound. So maybe it's a Moulin Rouge mm-hmm. kind of movie. <laughs> Edgar Wright musical. Yeah, sir. I mean, Moon, Moulin Rouge is one of my favorite movies. Drew, Drew's as well. I like the fact that a lot of the English... Or you know, English uh, actors and actresses are making their way over to the United States. I think that's amazing because, like, you, I didn't know Aegis Elder until I saw Luther actually, and I didn't know. I mean, Chris O'Dowd, he's doing pretty well over here, and then who else? Uh, um, Cumberbatch. Yeah, or, Cumberbatch is huge over he's here. He's really now. big. Um, and then Moss. Moss. And I see Crowder on his name. <laughs> um, David. Richard Ayoade. Yeah, Ayoade. Richard. He's actually know. directed some indie films that have done pretty well. Yeah. Uh, he did the Jesse Eisenberg movie, the one where he has a double. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember the name. I don't remember the name. name of it, don't yeah. Ask me. I, and then he also did, like, a submarine movie. Yeah. Like, well, not a literal submarine movie. Like, he did a movie that was called, like, uh, shoot. It was called Submarine, I think. It was presented by Ben Stiller. So Ben Stiller helped him, like, come over. That's pretty cool. But you're right about Chris O'Dowd. Like he's he's, he's in big. major movies he's now. He's actually he just he was in Broadway over Mice and Men, I believe. He Are was, you serious? Yeah, oh, I'm serious. Good for him. Yeah. So he's 
I don't, he's like the other character or whatever, the other guy in my sin in. So, yeah, he, he, I've heard it on um, NPR, so it was really oh, yeah? cool. I think the Cumberbatch is huge now here. He's amazing. I love him. He, oh, wow. He's like probably the only actor that can do good and, you know, protagonist and antagonist very well. Uh, the earliest I ever saw him was. Oh, I guess he's too, yeah. The yeah. earliest I ever saw Benedict Cumberbatch was. Um, uh, shoot, what was it? Um, Sherlock was sure. my first exposure to him. Yeah. For me, it was Steven Spielberg's War Horse. War Horse, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. Which also has Tom Hiddleston. And they are in the same scene together for you fangirls out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, if, if girls listen to this podcast. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, he's he's done a lot of movies. Like he did the WikiLeaks, sorry, Wiki WikiLeaks movie. Yep. Uh, he's doing one about uh, Alan Turing, like the guy who who broke the German code. He's done a lot. Good for him. Yeah. Like I, I hope he keeps it up. He's doing his Sherlock stuff. He's in the Hobbit movies um, as the dragon. What's the yeah. dragon? It's the name of the freaking movie. <laughs> Smog. Smog. Sorry, the desolation of Smog. And uh, he, he also does the Necromancer in the movie, too. He's and the Necromancer. Two roles. Wow. So I didn't know he with, did two roles with in the With Martin movie. Freeman. Oh. He's the... Uh, um, he's... Uh, oh, my God. The sidekick. Watson. Watson. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm oh, trying so many plays. I was about to ask you who. what's yeah. his name, because Watson. I only know him as Watson. He's pretty cool. Frodo? Too. No. Bilbo? Bilbo. Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins. Baggins. He's definitely the best best actor in that movie, I think. Best performance in that movie, I should say. Yeah. In The Hobbit. Well, we just ended on The Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> we started... Uh, oh, that's something... Uh, one thing premiering at Comic-Con uh, of... Uh, like, that nobody really knows anything about is the third Hobbit movie. The trailer? Yeah. The Battle um, of the Five Armies? Because, no, I mean, since it's not based on anything from a book... Um, it's like the appendices or whatever, so no one really knows what to what? expect. Are you serious? Yeah. I mean, it's going to have the very end of The Hobbit in it with the dragon attacking the town. Sure. But um, beyond that, the, the Battle of Five, Mar- Five Armies is, is just, we don't know what to expect. I'm excited to see what that's going to be. Well, we'll definitely talk about that next week once Comic-Con has gotten a little meat on its bones. Something else that uh, that we wanted to go over was... Um, something we forgot in our agenda, and Drew reminded me just now, is the Star Wars Episode Seven, X-Wing. Yeah. Drew, do you want to talk a little bit more about it? I'm sure you do. So, pretty much out of the blue, on Monday of this week, pre-Comic-Con week, the um, J.J. Abrams released a video... Um, in, in the vein of uh, the first video he released for the Force of Change charity sweepstakes thing, um, uh, letting us know that it's the last week sure. to to enter. I believe it was really only four days. Um, and uh, in the background of this video, instead of a, a puppet creature walking by, it's the X-Wing. Yeah. So he, he's standing in front of an X-Wing, and it's... Uh, Instead of a red line, it's got a blue line. It's a little sleeker looking. It's um, newer. I mean, how yeah. long has it been since the for, since yes, ever I mean, s- 20, <laughs> 20, 15 to thirty years somewhere yeah. along those lines? I mean, there's no official announcement on plot details or anything, so we don't know for sure. But I mean, if they're having Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford as they look now, it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be a, a good bit of time. I uh, thought it looked nice. Yeah, I was excited. I mean. They're definitely reaching for the the original trilogy look and feel rather than the prequels, which they've said they were going to do. So not everything is so nice and shiny, yeah, as in the prequels. Not everything mm-hmm. is CGI as in the prequels. Uh, something I liked about it is that it does look more futuristic. It does look like it had some use. Mm-hmm. Um, also, something that uh, I noticed, and I'm sure you noticed, Drew, was the lack of the lack of S foils. <laughs> so what makes the X fighter or the X wing is that when the lock S foils are in attack position, they, it looks like an X, mm-hmm. and that's of course the one that was popularized by Luke on his on his Death Star run in um, in the first Star Wars episode, uh, episode four. So I mean that's what made it super popular was the X. But it doesn't look like it's going to be an X. 
Um, yeah. I mean, someone they were people tweeting about, hey, what is this? I mean, this looks like Expanded Universe stuff, uh, Z95 or something like that. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if it was Disney, Bad Robot, or some other uh, group affiliated with Star Wars officially, but they responded and were like, this is just an X-Wing from oh. <laughs> from Star Wars Episode Seven." So I don't know, maybe they will separate. It, it did look like, you know, single wings that wouldn't separate, but... Who knows? Take that, Internet. <laughs> <laughs> they just crush your dreams. Yeah. Uh, I- I'm pretty sure that'll be a huge moneymaker for Buena Vista. Uh, Disney, like, they purchased Star Wars for a reason, and we're all salivated over it. Mm-hmm. So we can't wait. I'm sure it'll be one of the, the best-selling, I mean, the best movie in, what year is it going to come out? 2000? 2015. 2015, so it's coming Maybe out. Maybe ever. <laughs> Maybe ever, Yes. Uh, so that leads us into down with Avatar. Down with Avatar, and stupid Navi. <laughs> if I want to see Last of the Mohicans. I'll see Last of the Mohicans. All right. Uh, so that leads us into our discussions of the biggest surprises and the biggest disappointments, movie wise, so far. So some of the earlier podcasts we talked about what movies we're looking forward to and what we what, what we think is going to bomb. So. In this case, let's just go over, so far, 2014, we're in the middle of the year. Well, sort of. We were in July. Mm-hmm. So the Hollywood, the, the Hollywood summer blockbusters are almost over. So let's go over what our biggest disappointments are so far. And the, it's going to be a lot more disappointments. Yeah. So the most successful sure. movie up to this point, right now, as of 9.08 p.m. on this Tuesday afternoon, or Tuesday evening, is Captain America Winter Soldier. By far, it's our favorite, like we've said in the podcast, it's our favorite movie, and people have gone to the movies and seen it. Um, It's made around... And this is domestic box office. Yes, domestic box office. Um, It doesn't look like um, uh, maybe Transformers could catch up with it, but it's that movie slowed down really heavily, um, at least in the United States. What's that denomination? Is it... Millions? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Captain America has made $258 million. Uh, after that, coming in second place is the Lego movie. A very Lego close movie. second. A very close second is the Lego movie. 257. Uh, I wow. loved the Lego movie when it came out. Sukari? That was a good movie. Mm-hmm. I like... Both Captain America and Lego movie, I think, are overrated. Not, not heavily, but I don't like it as much as most people. Uh, they're both good. You think they're a product of uh, of the week, like the week at landscape right now of other movies? Do you think if Captain America Winter Soldier went against the Dark Knight that it would do that well? Probably not, right? No way. No. Yeah. Um, the Lego movie we have bought on iTunes, Sakai and I, and we rewatched it. So the Lego movie is it's, everything is awesome. It's a funny movie. Yes, everything <laughs> is awesome. I love the first half of that movie. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I loved all the voice characters and all the little cameo. I and did yeah. Michelangelo and Michelangelo and Lincoln. And, um, Charlie Day is amazing. Yeah, Charlie Day is in, yeah, he's, he's really funny I as love the 1960s Day. space guy. 1980s, um, wasn't it? 1960s. 80s. Was it 60s? Is it 60s or 80s? I don't know. I we'll think see. it's 80s. <laughs> uh, up next, in third place, is Old. Mm-hmm. X Men Days of Future Past. It's and that's 200- surprising to me. I mean, I love that movie, but. I'm am su- surprised it's remained so high. Yeah. It's a very it's a very comic book oriented like it's a very specific audience that it's going for. Because Days of Future Past, if you asked the like if I asked my neighbors, they probably won't know what Days of Future Past is. Mm-hmm. So it made two hundred thirty million dollars, and That's we have run. yeah uh, we have gone over this movie like we've reviewed it. Um, number four is my biggest surprise, mm-hmm. and it's Maleficent. Yeah. It's number four. It's number yeah. four. So far, it's made two hundred and twenty-eight million dollars. It's just two million behind X Men and barely holding uh, above Transformers right now. That's Transformers definitely pass it, but Maleficent being in the top five—that's a—that's crazy. And what I felt sleeper. was a, a bad movie. Like, I, Sakari, I what are your the plot? I mean, I think it was really, really good up until the end. Yeah, I think everything like the plot was it was pretty sound. I I, I liked it. I, I I just did not like if 
y'all haven't seen it, there is somewhat of a twist. Yeah, a very, a very so, feminist twist. And I didn't mm-hmm. like that, which was... It's not feminist. I would... Yeah, whatever. Similar to the ending of Frozen. Yeah. From what I hear. I haven't never seen Frozen. Frozen. I haven't seen Maleficent. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, just... It's just... The plot... It, plot's good. And the, the effects are really great. I mean, I, I thought it was... I liked it up till the end. <laughs> I was like, oh, forget it. It shows that Angelina Jolie is still an A actress. She a is amazing. A actor. It's just, it's because It's a of movie her. about her. Like, it's, it, exactly. it's, it's Angelina Jolie as <laughs> Maleficent. That's, that's how it. I feel. It's because of her that's why it's done so well, because she does an amazing job. That's the biggest surprise so far. Uh, disappointment so far, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah, yeah. ranked at number six, just below $202 million. Dollars. Maleficent, God. that? That is... That should not have happened. <laughs> and we reviewed Amazing Spider-Man uh, in previous podcasts, so we're not going to go over reviews again. But that is disappointing. Um, Spider-Man, like the Tobey Maguire movies, have been like the top grossing all time. Well, I mean, it was the first set out. That's why. Right. So. Um, uh, another another disappointment uh, so far this year uh, that had a lot of pedigree to it was... Uh, the Transcendence movie. Right. Uh, it had Wally Pfister, who is... Uh, this is jumping way down the list. Yeah, this is <laughs> jumping way down the list. Transcendence has made $23 million. Ranked 50. Ranked 50. And I mean, Johnny Depp headlining a movie, and it's ranked 50 for the year, and it's only halfway through the year? Halfway through the year. And it's not an indie movie, you know? No, it's not. By any means, it's... Big budget uh, production. Wally Pfister was um, a major contributor with Christopher Nolan, so he had that pedigree. Mm-hmm. It had like Rebecca Hall, Paul Bettany, like Cillian Murphy, like Morgan Freeman is in this movie. I'm sure Christopher Nolan pulled a lot of strings to get those people in there what and to see it at number 50. What was this bad. about again? Um, Transcendence is Johnny Depp, who like goes brain dead oh yeah okay and then they program a that's computer right. program, or they, yeah. they program they transfer like a his consciousness to a computer done. that's why I, I, it just seemed all too familiar to me I felt like that was going to do better I mean it, it had all that pedigree it was definitely um, taken down by critics I think it's one of those movies where bad word of mouth really low critic scores just destroyed it well we're going to do it maybe maybe it's maybe it deserved it I don't know I didn't see it <laughs> but um, another disappointment, and um, uh, sorry, another disappointment is a million ways to die in the West. It's ranked number thirty-seven so far this year. Seth MacFarlane has a dud. Yeah. Uh, I know Ted did really well. Ted did was was really good. A million ways to die in the West made forty-two million dollars. Ranked below Need for Speed. <laughs> uh, and blended the Adam Sandler. Drew Barrymore Africa trip. Movie. Yeah. So that has to be. I mean, there was a lot of hype going into A Million Ways to the West. I mean, A Million Ways to Die in the West. Seth MacFarlane, Charlize Theron, Liam Nielsen, it has Neil Patrick Harris, uh, Amanda Siegfried, like uh, Giovanni Ribisi. So, I mean, th- this was a star studded cast and just pooped. Like, it just pooped out. That had that. I mean, that has to be a disappointment for Universal. Like Trailer the movie looked studio. really mm-hmm. good. Um, up its most wanted. Uh, who remembers that? Like that just came and went. Yeah. Ranked number thirty-one for the year. Wasn't Gervais in that one? Yeah, yeah. Ricky Gervais. Um, uh, uh, Phil Tina Dunphy. Faye. What's his name? Oh uh, like? yeah, yeah. Phil um, Dunphy from uh, Modern, Modern Family. Family. Ty Burrell was Ty in Burrell. it. Uh, I mean, they had a lot of. I guess people love and I mean, a- Amy Adams and Jason. I, I actually saw it. Um, it definitely is forgettable. Like I forgot it was released this year until I just saw it on this list. Um, oh yeah, I th- I actually thought it was funnier than the first one, the first really? of the reboot, the one from a couple years ago. But I don't, I wouldn't say it was a better movie because it just lacked um, the charm and the heart. Like it was oh, just really? a, just Tina a comedy. Just a, yeah, it was just a sketch comedy. Yeah, uh, something it wasn't that great. Sorry, Drew, but I laughed more. Oh yeah. Uh, something to round out are our biggest surprises. Uh, biggest surprises are two book movies, mm-hmm. Divergent, number 10, $150 million, and then The Fault in Our Stars, the, the, the little movie that could. I mean, it's about, yeah. it's about people with, that are sick and like they fall in love. Um, and they're fast-tracking 
Divergent. Um, isn't that the same lead actress too? Isn't it? It's yeah. Our stars. It's uh, they're fast really? tracking the seas the season the sequel. Um, is it Insurgent? I think might be the sequel. I'm not sure. Yeah, they're fast tracking that. They want to get that out maybe next year. I think, which is ridiculous. They're, I mean, they're trying. They're definitely trying to compete with Hunger Games. This isn't as successful as that, but at least so far, it's in the top ten so far of this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, who well, I guess know? maybe not directly compete with Hunger Games because it's they're both Lionsgate, but it's really they're most trying to have the, another Hunger Games. Yeah, it's most of the book, the fans of the book. If you're yeah. a fan of the book, the, you're like definitely going to go see that. I like that, that the yeah. books that are, are not star- well, yeah, like they're not super mainstream, but mm-hmm. are being made into movies. It's a, it's a, it's a win-win. Like yeah. the books, I'm sure the books are selling well, mm-hmm. and then that translates to success in the box that's, office. So that's, that's pretty cool. We'll on. see how uh, the Giver, uh, another young adult. Yeah, that's right. Dystopian movie coming out, I think, uh, next month in August. Yeah, that's on the... And then there's another one, uh, very similar to Hunger Games, The Maze Runner. Oh, there we go. It's like the Hunger Games with a male protagonist. Ooh. So that's uh, that's coming out this fall. Uh, There's a lot of those. A lot of... um, We can mention Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. uh, Just got released. We reviewed recently on our our podcast. The... um, it's down at number 12, but it's only a second week. It's it's doing well. It held the number one spot for the second week in a row. Which is uncommon so far mm-hmm. this, this year. Yeah, that's um, exciting news. I think it's it's not faring well overseas, uh, but I'm not so sure it's open in many regions yet. I, I haven't looked into it, but... It's a big win for Fox. I compared mean, to Transformers and the like, it's overseas gross is really low. If you said that the Captain America and Blade movies are... Overrated, Donna the Planet of the Apes has to be underrated because mm-hmm. no one like it's been four years since the last movie, three or four years, and no one's even there's no hype about that movie. Uh, so that's the neighbors. I mean, a lot of pedigree, but it's still way higher than I expected that to to be. It's way higher than Noah for Christ's sake. Yeah. No pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> I mean. Noah is this huge epic by Darren Aronofsky. He left the Wolverine for this, like, and then made a hundred and one million dollars. It made less than Mr. Peabody and Sir. <laughs> it made less than the crap ass three hundred Rise of an Empire. Can you believe that? I guess you never know what's gonna hit, what's gonna miss in the Hollywood world. I still want to see Noah. <laughs> well, uh, well, we'll one, see it when it comes day, out. When yeah. it comes out, I yeah, saw it. Not it's like it's not theater. a bad movie by any means. It's it's beautiful, um, slow, and, and yeah. like I said earlier, I'm not very learned on the Bible, so that's yeah. It was maybe a little over my head. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. but um, Darren Aronofsky did, did, did a decent job. A lot of Bible movies coming up. <laughs> well, um, I know this is a topic that we can talk a lot about. Uh, so if um, we will go over the year end, 2014, hopefully the podcast goes that mm-hmm. long. I mean, uh, knock on wood. Uh, so our next topic that we want to discuss as a roundtable are what games we'd like to be remastered. Uh, recently, Sakai finished Wind Waker HD which was originally a GameCube game, and it looked wonderful. It looked amazing on the Wii U. So, what mo- What? I'm sorry, not what movies. What games would you like to see remastered or maybe redone? Uh, Drew, your thoughts? Um, uh, when presented with this topic, I couldn't... I mean, I was, my mind was swirling all around any SNES game that I played and loved. Um, my favorite... I think is definitely Final Fantasy VI. All right. Uh, I would love. I mean, I would love to see that in a, you know, console, TV console, fourth gen, uh, graphics, 3D world. Um, not because I know they redid Final Fantasy IV on the DS. It was crap. Uh, so similar to like Final Fantasy like 13. Yeah. Graphics. I mean, if, if you could get. With, without uh, making it too modern, like thirteen, mm-hmm. you know, without changing the look or the story or the gameplay, just just a straight up boost into the future. Oh yeah, exact same game, just prettier, you know. And I mean, for the sprites of that time, it was definitely top notch. And I mean, I'm sure it was one of the most expensive games at the time of its release. <laughs> it was, um, it was huge. Um, the uh, that movie, the movie, the video game is so character driven more than mm-hmm. any Final Fantasy and I would, l- I would just love to see more modern 
audiences get that? Your enthusiasm has really piqued my interest in that. I started playing Final Fantasy at Final Fantasy VII and just gone on. Hmm. So now that you talk about Final Fantasy VI like that, I would love to see it remade. Uh, what console did it come on? Sorry? That was a Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo? So I'm not sure what, what kind of rights Nintendo would still have with it. I know they, they do release it on they release it on the Wii Virtual Console. Oh, okay. I think I'll take a look at that. it's been re-released for the DS. Uh, not in the 3D graphics like Final Fantasy IV, just um, re-released on a DS cartridge. Um, or maybe it was Game Boy Advance, or both. I don't know. But it's also on, like, some... You can download it on the PlayStation, I think, on the PlayStation oh, really? Store. Or I know at least it was on the PS Vita, I'm sure. So, I don't know... How, like... If they remade it, who who would have dibs? I don't know. I'm a big Nintendo fanboy, so I would love to see it on the Wii U. But, oh, of course. You know, it, that might actually sell a PS4 to me if, if they did that. <laughs> I would. Nice. I mean, I wasn't too intrigued by the Wind Waker HD remake, but I there's probably a very small chance that I wouldn't want to play that on the PlayStation. Nice. Uh, Sakari, your thoughts? What game would you like to see remastered or remade? Um, Mario sixty four. Uh, I we didn't we went straight from the eighty five Nintendo console to Mario sixty four in my household. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, it was a big jump. We didn't have anything in between and that was like the first game we had and well that with Star Fox and of course um, Mario Kart. But Mario sixty four that was a really good fun game. I really liked that game and I would like to see it redone again. I've I've beaten that several times all the way yeah. through all one hundred and twenty stars. That I mean, would be a good one. I never got a chance to beat it, but it was it was really fun just to see Mario hop, kick, skip, flip, mm-hmm. jump, and all that stuff. That and, was a and, fun and all part. Its polygon yeah. glory. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and swim. It Metal was Mario. Neat. That's where Metal Mario first came yeah, out, right? Exactly. So it was just it's just that would be nostalgic. Good, a good one to have um, a full orchestral remake of the score too. That would be really cool. Same for Final Fantasy VI too. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing well, that in. There. I mean, Drew, you've played other Super Mario games. How does like how does like Super Mario Galaxy or like Super Mario World 3D, whatever it's called now, like how do they Galaxy stack up to that? Galaxy Two is my favorite Mario game. Oh yeah, like a solo Mario game. That movie is great. That movie. I keep saying movie. <laughs> the, the, I mean, we did just talk about movies for yeah, like yeah. forty minutes. So. The game? No, that game is excellent. Um, it's. It's a different. I mean, it's a much different feel than yeah than Mario sixty four. It's in space, you know. You're you're not playing in worlds really. You're just in a. You're on s- small pieces, jumping from one to the other. Um, the new Super Mario 3D World on Wii U yeah. um, is more, you know. Is that the it's one not Galaxy. Cat, cat yeah, suits? you do the cat suits. Um, I've never experienced multiplayer on that, but you can do up to four players. The um, it's hard. I mean, it's hard for me to compare it to Mario 64 because Mario 64 just seems to stand out on its own against anything. I mean, it doesn't even look like Mario Sunshine on the GameCube. Oh yeah, it's it's like in a class of its own, and it's so. I mean, that was the point in gaming that I don't think we'll ever experience again. Um, going from like Super Mario World to Super Mario, uh, Link to the Past to Ocarina of Time, yeah, like 2D to 3D. I, I don't even think like. What we have now to virtual reality will probably ever compare no. to that, you know. Oh man, that's it's our sad kids, to think back. We'll never know that. Yeah, we'll never, never get that again. What What's yours? Uh, I'm gonna stick on the Nintendo train. Super Mario RPG, I mentioned, was my favorite retro game. Mm. So that's something I would like to be remade. Uh, it looked great back then, and I can't like I would love to see it remade in the like the the way Wind Waker got remade. Um, like I mentioned, some of my earliest memories with RPGs started there. Uh, the adventures with Gino and Malo and um, like Smithy, like you had to defeat him to get like the stars, and uh, that was so cool. So I'd like to. Uh, sorry, you go ahead. No, I mean I would just love to see it remade, remastered in HD. Um, like Drew mentioned, not necessarily change the story or uh, or anything like that. Just make it pretty. That's that's a game I would love to see remastered. Um, with the, like with the soundtrack also being played by an mm. orchestra, like that would be cool. Uh, I would easily sink like a hundred hours into that. <laughs> I, I mean, I would love it. 
I'd like to see more of more of a free world if they ever remade that. Because I know, oh my god, the, the, the so cool. if you could just travel around on the islands, you know, um, yeah, in the clouds, that would make it a little bit less like a Mario game. I, I think that's what they were going for, you know, just traveling from level to level. Sure, um, but it would be very, very much more RPG. But I think that would be great. And and one of my favorite parts of that game is Gino and Mallow. You know, yeah. those are characters we haven't seen since. No, we, uh, don't know if we're, uh, we'll ever see them again. <sighs> To have that remade, That's a shame. like to to relive Gino and Mallow, that those maybe, are two of my favorite characters. Like, maybe I would, have them in the next Super right? Smash Brothers. Yeah, dude, that would be amazing. Yes, that I would. I love Smash Smithy. Brothers. But if they were in it, I would buy it in a heartbeat. <laughs> like with Smithy, Smithy was so difficult to defeat. Like he was a big sword. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's our podcast for this week. Um, thank you for listening to us, and uh, we hope that you leveled up your nerd IQ. Uh, as always, uh, we love for you guys to provide feedback. So if you could go to iTunes and provide some feedback on the podcast, we would love to improve. Uh, we're currently working on a newer agenda where we where we uh, cover something in every genre, television, comics, games, movies. Uh, so if you guys want to provide any any topics, uh, this game uh, this game topic was actually submitted by a listener. Uh, so that's that's something that really that that we really love to talk about. Uh, you can email you can email us at nerdexp at gmail dot com. Um, you can follow at nerdexp on Twitter. You can follow myself Edgar at at e d g a r e x eighty six. Uh, you can follow Drew at world is square spelled backwards. Just just look at my friend <laughs> list and you'll find Drew. <laughs> and then Sakari. Um, what what's what's your Twitter handle? It's at Sakari Thinks, S A K A R I T H I N K S. So uh, thank you, listeners. Um, we we are going to stick on this Tuesday um, uh, or a, like one specific day that we're going to be recording the podcast. So today you got with or without you, Chris. With or without you, Chris. Um, with or without Guillermo. Uh, we are trying to add some new people as well. We always love to um, like to hear new, new uh, perspectives and new thing, um, like new perspective and new voices. Of course, I'm sure you're tired of hearing us. Um, so thank you again for all the loyal listeners and for new listeners. And um, level up, friends.